So as of Vim 8, you no longer actually need a plugin manager in Vim, and that's because native plugin management got considerably easier. Now, this is also true for NeoVim as well. However, it's not perfect, so that's why you still see a lot of people recommending things like Vimplug and Pathogen. So the way it worked in the past is when you go and download a plugin, basically you'd have to go and move the files in those plugins into one of these directories here. So the colors, compiler, after, doc, FT detect, FT plugin, so on and so forth. But that was really annoying and made it really, really difficult to actually update the plugins. But the way it works now is you just download the plugin, put it in a specific location, and it just magically works like your plugin manager does. Okay, so let's say we want to go and install something like VimWiki. Now, obviously the first thing you need to do is go and download it from GitHub, GitLab, Vim.org, wherever it is you want to download your plugin from. And from here, what we need to do is inside of our .vim directory, or our .config slash nvim if we're using NeoVim, is go and make a new directory called pack. Now this name is very important, make sure that it's actually called pack. Now inside of here, we need to go and make some other directory. Now this name doesn't actually matter. It can be called plugin, it can be your name, it can be vim, or as you see here, you can even have multiple directories and then sort out your plugins into different categories. Basically everything inside of the pack directory will be loaded. So inside of one of these folders, let's go into the plugins folder. We need to make one or both of these directories, the start and the opt directory. So start is for eager loading and opt is for lazy loading. Now I'll go over the opt directory in just a moment, but most people are probably going to want to use start because eager loading basically means that as soon as you open up Vim, the plugin is going to be loaded. To install the plugin without having any of your documentation working, all you need to do is just paste the plugin in here and it will just magically work. So if we go open up our VimWiki now, as we can see, that's working perfectly fine. Now what do I mean by the documentation not working? So if we go and do help and then try to write out VimWiki and try to autocomplete it, as you can see, we're not actually getting anything. And that's because Vim doesn't automatically go and generate the help tags. Basically the help tags are just easy way to jump around the VimWiki help document. You still do have the VimWiki.txt file you can look at, but you don't have any of the easy jump points. Fixing that is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is run the help tags command and then pass in the path to wherever the documentation for that plugin is located. Now, we pass in the directory, not the file itself. So the file that contains the documentation in this case is VimWiki.txt. We only pass in this massive path right here. And that is what I've got down here. If we go and run this now and then reopen up my VimWiki and we try to search for help VimWiki, as we're going to see, we have all of this documentation available now. So what does this lazy loading op directory actually do? Well, lazy loading basically means that the plugin won't be loaded until we tell it to actually load. So if we go and open up VimWiki again, as we can see, it's no longer actually working because I've moved the folder over into my op directory. So the way that we go and load that is we go and run the pack add command and then pass in the name of the plugin. Now the name of the plugin is whatever the name of this folder is right here. So in this case, it will be VimWiki. And nothing has changed just because this is VimWiki and it was a bad example. But if we go and switch back into the index file, as we can see, it's now actually working just fine. If you want to load multiple plugins and you don't want to do it one by one, we can go pack load all and that will load everything that's contained inside of your op directory. If we run it now, nothing actually changes just because VimWiki was the only thing in there. So you could use this to make it so certain plugins won't run until you actually come across a certain file type or maybe until you try to run a certain mapping. Basically, this will let you choose when you actually want to load up your plugins. So can we just get rid of our plugin manager altogether then? Well, yes, you can, but it's not really that simple. So we've addressed installation, we've addressed documentation. If you want to do an uninstall, it's very simple. All you have to do is go find the plugin you want to uninstall and then just go and delete it. And there you go. Now you no longer have the plugin installed. But when it comes to updating the plugins, it becomes a little bit more annoying. So let's say we want to go and update something like COC. All we have to do is go into that directory and then go git pull origin and then pull from whatever branch it tells you to pull from. So in this case, we are on the release branch. So we will pull from the release branch and you will get a warning specifying that there might be issues with doing so. However, I haven't actually run into any problems with this, and that's because all of the changes have already been dealt with on the remote. So unless you're modifying the plugin locally, you won't actually have any merge conflicts. 
But all of that assumes that you're not backing up your dot files within a Git repo because if you are, it all becomes a little bit more complex because right now what you have is a Git repo embedded inside of another Git repo and Git isn't really that happy about doing that without making some changes. So what we need to do is make all of the plugins their own Git sub-modules. So if you go to wherever your dot files are stored, in my case, that'll be in my dot files directory. And in here, in my config directory, I've got a folder called nvim. And the nvim folder we saw before is just a sim link to this directory right here. So what we need to do is go git sub-module init. And after that, what we need to do is go git sub-module add, and then the URL to the remote. So in this case, it'll be this one right here because we're gonna do it for fzf.vim and then the path to wherever the plugin is actually located. So in this case, it'll be in config slash nvim slash pack slash uh, plugins slash uh, start slash fzf.vim, uh, dot vim, not slash vim, cool. And then from this point onwards, you'll be able to go and commit stuff like normal. Now, if you have multiple plugins, obviously you're going to have to do that for every single one of your plugins. And in my case, that's like 20 or so things. So that's going to take a while. I just haven't gotten around to actually doing it yet. Now, if you want to go and update your sub modules, all you have to do is go git sub module update dash dash remote dash dash merge. And there we go. Now it's going to go and update that. But as you see, we don't actually have any changes right now. Now getting rid of the sub module, I find to be really, really annoying because sub modules are an absolute pain to work with. So I find the easiest thing to do is to do a git rm f. So that's a forced removal and then pass in the path to the plugin. So this should go and clean up your git sub modules file and it will go and remove the plugin itself. But if this doesn't work, there are other methods you can take. But if you absolutely have to, you may need to go and manually modify your .git directory and manually modify your .git modules file. But hopefully it doesn't come to that. If you're not using git to back up your .files though, there is absolutely no problem with doing this package management method. Luckily though, all of this is just running a couple of commands. So it's pretty easy to script. And some people have actually gone and made scripts to already do this. now. I don't think any of these are going to address the sub-module problem. These are just for dealing with the Git packages. So this will let you do things like upgrading a package, get the list of upgrades, download a new package, remove a package, export package list. Basically act like a regular sort of package manager. Or we have this one over here, which is vim pack add, which will do basically the same things with just a slightly different interface. And if you want to go and deal with the sub-module problem yourself, it shouldn't really be that difficult to script as long as you can work out a consistent way to get rid of sub-modules. So obviously there's still a lot of convenience you get from running a plugin manager, but it's not like the old days of Vim where you'd have to go and manually move the files into the location that they need to be in. Now all you need to do is just dump it in a place and it magically works. So while it's still more convenient in many ways to just go and use something like Pathogen or Vimplug, which effectively do the same things anyway, but they'll also address things like the help tags, the updating, the removal and things like that. So Yes, they are more convenient, but if you're just starting out with Vim, maybe you might want to explore the native plugin manager and just see how it works. Obviously, if you're going to be working inside of a Git repo, it's going to be a massive pain, but it could be a bit of a fun learning experience. And hey, if you want to script it, it's not going to be that hard. So before I go, I'd like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Kulbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan, Monsterzai, Joseph, Pitty, Road, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Marek, Mikhail, Nate, Dog, Nephite, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to support my work, there'll be some links down below to my subscribe star, Libra Pay, Patreon, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And this channel is available on Library, Odyssey, BitChute, BitShoot, all of those other places. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and... I'm out.